record. 1,700 bucks here on the line between Foggy and Infi, the losers of the two semifinals clashing here for one last hurrah. Infi is sick and tired of Night Elf versus Human, so he's switching to Night Elf as well. We start this best of five as a Night Elf mirror. Alrighty. Can he really wait in the mirror here? Usually we always see the humans going towards Night Elf for, you know, when, when they're going up against Undead or Orc maybe, but now feeling that he has better chances in the mirror. Perhaps trying to hard counter a special way. Of course, Infi is very strong with all races. Perhaps not as strong as TH, but still certainly capable of yeah making use of the Keeper's strength because that is... The first hero here for both. No surprise here. Northern Isles, by the way, our first map in this best of five. Yeah, we've seen this map as the opener yesterday as well, a couple of times, or in this playoffs in general. Never vetoed, but never really picked, I guess. So it's the remaining map that we start on. Uh, Foggy in the red, in the bottom left, and in the upper right, it's uh, the Bronze Boy. Infi, two times in a row at World Championships, he got the third place. And yeah, maybe here at Thunder and Fire Cup as well. As the early game here is going a little bit slowly, as always, we have mirrored creep routes, everything standard. We can maybe talk about the maps here a little bit more. As, we, as you said, we've seen Northern Isles a lot of times here in this somewhat unusual map pool. This map pool is a mix of, mix of old and new maps, whereas in WGL we don't have Turtle Rock anymore. We do have it here, whereas we don't have Concealed Hill in this pool, whereas we do have it in WGL. When the new maps came out, I was like starting with really liking Concealed Hill and not so much Northern Isles, but it's switching around on me. How do you feel about that? I got kind of the same feeling. Northern Isles really had no uh, real uh, characteristics, I guess. But with the one shop only uh, and with no mercenaries, that's certainly a very diverse map from what we usually see. And of course the marketplace with auras, which we've seen yesterday. Yeah, the marketplace is really cool. I'm still not a fan of the one shop thing. I think that's uh, really problematic in a lot of matches. But yeah, it makes for special um, pressure on the map, racing to the shop and all that. So it does add something as well. No Merc Camp really hasn't shown to be too problematic here. And I feel like no race is really feels screwed over and there's not too much abuse going on. Um, whereas in Concealed Hill, it can sometimes be a little problematic. But alright, let's focus on what's going on here in this game. Do we have an expansion here from somebody somewhere? Not really. Both are attacking pretty much at the same time. Foggy a little faster with this, and the first one to get to that shop, which we mentioned earlier, going for his favorite item, the Staff of Teleportation. And what a nice timing as well. Whisper scouting this creep spot, the illusion, we're drawing out the creep, so there's no boulder tossing here, which helps Infi, but he's getting jacked. Bunch of mana stealing being used on Infi's side, so there's no mana anymore for Foggy, and what can he really do? There is illusions tanking the damage, there's no Antangle, there's no Treants, I mean, he's buying some time. Yes, but nothing died. Creeping simultaneously with the archers on the other side, that's gonna give him level 3. Would have loved to use that level 2 entangle here to find some kills, but that wand of mana stealing. Not allowing for this. Actually, the level up now gets him to the mana and the sentry wards. I love the placement. So powerful when in the right position. And he now has like basically perfect information for whatever Infi is doing. Because yeah. he's, other, he's either gonna see him or he's gonna know where else he is. Because if he's not seeing him with the sentry wards, then he knows that his opponent is heading south somewhere towards the red camp or the laboratory. Yeah, we've seen very powerful watch awards on the new two maps. Same for Concealed Hills at WGL. Remember how uh, Focus used them very nicely. So yeah, everything is covered. He sees it now that Infi is rushing over. Maybe he has to hurry up with this creep. The Warlord is still up. This could be a big creep jack, but the Alchemist is here for Foggy already, throwing the first bomb and now focusing on this Ice Troll to get the experience and the big item. And Foggy gets it. Book of the Dead being used at the moment. A pretty bad item because the Wisps are here. Alchemist now for Infi as well, but he uses it immediately. He has to send the Wisp over for the Dead Knight, but Knight splitting. He only gets half of it. Acid Bomb is doing tremendous damage to Foggy though. A tangle being used as well. This alchemist is in trouble. There is an invo potion, but he's not willing to swap that over. So first hero kill goes to the Chinese. Yeah, that was too stubborn by Foggy. 
he was the first to start this camp and then go for the same timing of the second hero. And he really wanted to get that item, but it came at the cost of the second hero and three archers. And now the invul as well. Completely overextending or, I don't know, overestimating his ability to take out that creep quickly enough. That was way too costly. And we've seen this yesterday in the game on Northern Isles by Foggy as well. Maybe he just doesn't like the cold on this map and wants to finish stuff quickly, but there was an overcommitment yesterday as well, which cost him the game after a great early. This time the early wasn't even really good. It was okay, but... Oh, wait a second. Infi forgot the Huntress Hall and has <laughs> no second engine of war. Oh yeah, both did, exactly. But Foggy has the second engine of war up. Infi doesn't. Yeah, looking at the bases, I was like, huh, is this going to be a different game? Is this not going to be the Glaives again? Because we're not seeing a Hunter's Hall, but no, they just forgot about it, apparently. Now with a bit of map control here, uh, as the last engagement did go Infi's way, he's deciding to creep the corner of the map, which is pretty unusual. Normally, when you gain a bit of an advantage, you are the stronger player on the field at the moment, and then you can stay in the middle and, you know, use a map presence and take out several camps at the... Uh, red camp, he gets a nice item here, the Cat Gas Pipe, but it's only one camp here pretty much that he can k take now, and is giving up a lot of the map to his opponent. Exactly, Foggy went to the shop but didn't buy anything yet, maybe sold some stuff. Yeah, he's at 400 gold now, waiting for his Glaives to come in with the first upgrade as well, but no heal scrolls, no invul potions. But he's creeping his opponent's natural, which is uh, quite a big chunk of experience and of course a nice item. Ring of Regen. Infi does kind of the same. Uh, just a little weaker spot with the spiders here. So many archers by Infi, though. Exactly. Is he actually going to go into Glaives? Yeah, okay. He is. Glaives are coming. Holy shit. That's Pendant of Energy archers, right? and the pipe for Infi. What a tremendous inventory on this Keeper of the Grove. Absolutely. Going to be able to spam those spells. Seems like... Like the creep routes here towards the mid game aren't exactly mirrored, but they're kind of sharing the corners of the map. It's the top left for Foggy and the bottom right for Infi. Class of course, plus nine. Infi should be faster with this. He has so many of those archers, which Foggy doesn't really have anymore after losing so many in the middle earlier. And that can be great damage on the glaive throwers if the archers are spread and the Vorpal blades don't affect them too much. Their piercing damage is pretty damn good against the Glaive Throwers. So we don't have a level 4 Keeper for Foggy, but a level 2.6 Alchemist. And he seems to be the carry in longer games. Level 4 and 3. Better levels for Infi, but the Glaive Throwers are out only for Foggy. Vorpal Blades, 50%. Nice double detonate here against the Treants. That's going to be level 4 for the Keeper who has to staff away. This is getting a little bit dicey, but TP out from Infi. He is... Didn't really gain too much here. Moon juice, I guess, drain. That's going to be about all of it. And this keeps on happening to Foggy, right? The second or third daytime, whatever it is now. He's always low on moon juice. Yeah. Once again, we're not far into the day and he's completely dry. And his keeper is at 200 HP only. I guess with his TP, Infi can creep up even more now. The rest of the natural, only the big rock golem is gone. And the rat spot is still up for grabs as well as the spiders here. So maybe they aren't sharing the map 50-50, but Infi, if he's fast enough, can get a huge XP advantage now. Yeah, Foggy should know where his opponent is so he can decide to engage now and fight for the top left or to ignore and play more passively and take out the remaining camps towards the center if he's still, if he's aware that they're still here. But now we're gonna have the first big engagement of this game. We have three Glaive Throwers for Infi against three for Foggy as well, but only for Foggy we have Zeppelin. The Wisp coming in for the dead net, getting rid of the Treants pretty quickly, but it's so many more archers for Infi. However, now the Keeper in trouble at the shop. He's entangled, he's taking focus fire, and again, he has to TP out of this. Quite costly. Two Town Portals gone, 700 gold. Foggy had the advantage of Vorpal Blades and the second upgrade. Of course, the disadvantage of the heroes and the archers, not denying stuff. Getting another Entangle kill on this very archer, so... What's Infi doing now? He can be very satisfied with his progress thus far. Four Glaive Throwers here against... Wait, Foggy, only one? No, ah, Zeppelin, I see. Four on the Zeppelin. Good old Law Lion Foggy Zeppelin play here. But he can't take a fight right now. Infi, is he aware? 
of what's happening. Apparently not, as he's moving out of his base. All right, it's gonna be some uh, drop play here. He's gonna try to annoy. He's gonna try to distract. What can he kill though with these glaives? The haunted gold mine. He's going for the tree of ages, but there's nature's blessing already. It's pretty tanky. He would love to force an uproot right here. He Have HP wisdom. already. Yeah, but mass repair coming in now. Infi is moving back. This force to distraction, but what is Foggy doing in the meantime? Nothing really. It's not creeping. He's just positioning himself in the middle of the map and needs to be careful. Are under uh, why oh, the tree? Counter Zeppelin drop is getting intercepted in the middle, and the Zeppelin already really low. Has to be careful with that one now. Foggy is pushing into Infi's main. This Zeppelin drop, interesting. Luring out of the base a little. Acid pump on the keeper. Moon juice is really low as well. Has to use the potion. Archers are starting to fall for Infi. Just right clicking the keeper and look at the damage. The first heroes melting the archers as well. This is looking great for Foggy now. Absolutely. Really good by him, realizing the weakness of the hero there. No TP, no invul, no health potion anymore, and he dies. And uh -oh. I think the Alchemist level 3 is going to follow as well. With the Entangle, not even Acid Bomb required here. Oh my god, the Zeppelin almost saves him, but everything else is dying. Can the Glaives oh, somehow almost. save him in this game? I don't know. The Zeppelin is so low. The Zeppelin's going to fall, and that's it. GG. Wow. One zero. Didn't expect that, to be honest, after Foggy's early mid-game. He was basically down in every single regard, but the Zeppelin play worked out really nicely. And Infi with this fight caught off guard. Yeah, I think especially the first fight in the middle at the shop where the keeper had to TP away again. That that wasn't really well controlled, right? The archers were stuck behind the glaives for so long. The keeper was way too far up. And even before that, after that favorable engagement in the early, he didn't capitalize at all. He gets an advantage, and then he goes creeping just the same as Foggy is. Didn't look too too well played, to be honest. Nah, that's true. I certainly agree with that. Maybe on a different map he strikes back, as it's Amazonia next now. Thank you very much, uh, Ref G Kraken, who gifted the sub to Xfire Style 2K. Uh, Tottis... Tottestein? Has subbed as well. Thank you. And OC, thank you for the host, man. 1 0 lead for the Ukrainian, who is still in Shanghai. Playing this with fair conditions. Yeah, exactly. Having uh, been in China already for quite a while, had actually did actually have to extend his visa to stay a little bit longer. Do you know whether he's going to be leaving immediately after the tournament or not might sure. he be staying until his visa ends? I don't know. I think there's not too many tournaments in China now as they go into a little break due to Chinese New Year. So there's no real reason, I guess, except streaming and playing on netties. So I can't imagine him going back. He's been there for a month now. so But we don't know if he's talking to some clubs or whatever. Not really. We don't know what Foggy is up to these days. Um, just have to make sure the Russians here didn't uh, pick up the red color. <laughs> Always the same problematics here. They could just invite the players first and then the cast. It would make st stuff so much easier. They could. Of course, this is the lead in to the grand final. A little warm up here. It's not that important. It's, of course, a lot of uh, prize money that you get extra and the bronze medal here. $300 difference. Uh, but what we're all waiting for is the big final of TH versus Moon, which will be played after this best of three. Yeah, this, uh, that's going to be uh, the fireworks, man. <laughs> really looking forward to that. I was so hoping that we're going to see Human here again and perhaps Infi, you know, trying to redeem himself for yesterday, showing that he, you know, can play a better game and not get rattled so much as he did there. Yeah, but it's a typical Infi move uh, to switch races after a defeat like yesterday. Uh, 
Maybe they're gonna rehost the game in a bit, as nobody really understands the issue. Ah, okay. There we have some red now. That should be fine. Hope that admins allow it. Yeah, and with the uh, Chinese New Year coming, we have the big hope that NetEase is finally gonna patch to 1.30.4. But it's cool to see that some humans have found solutions. I mean, yesterday, TH was so great. Infi on map one totally head to head with Moon. But then, you know, game two and three were uh, Infi Infi games afterwards. Kind of, yeah, unfortunately. To be fair, though, Moon played really well. Moon played really, really well. Yeah. If both players play as well as they did yesterday, oh boy, I don't know what will happen to me, my heart rate and my enthusiasm when they uh, when these matches unfold later today. Thank you, Zintol, for the prime sub. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. Map number two, we have Foggy in the lead, and we're heading towards Amazonia. Used to be Foggy's favorite map. He was so strong here in the past in different matchups against Human and Orc both. So powerful with that aggressive Demon Hunter style. Of course, then the big patch happened, 1.30. Everything changed. But this still we consider a very strong Night Elf map, which, of course, in the mirror, not as big of a deal, not as, you know, influential. But... I would assume that Foggy still feels comfortable here. I totally agree. I mean, if you're not comfortable with Night Elf on Amazonia, where else? Uh, maybe Terranas as well. But usually everything is a little mirrored here and everybody does the same. But I wonder if Infi is doing something different. He showed us a new creep trick on Echo Elves that I've not seen from Night Elves before at the marketplace. And there are two creep routes here, maybe even three. Of course, you start with a laboratory as always, but then what? Trolls on the bottom right or going into nulls in the middle, maybe even for the shop. Yeah, I think the standard nowadays is to go for those trolls because the murlocs and the kobolds on your side kind of belong to you anyways, and he can't get them anyways. So you go further out, try to take some more contestable camps. I think that's the development here I've seen recently. This map, by the way, has seen some Demon Hunter play as well for those creep capabilities for that fairly early level 3. But again, um, the Demon Hunter, we saw him a couple of times, but then he disappeared again. It's going to be Keeper all the way here one more time. Yeah, both players are, like, especially Infi, as this is just a side race, that he's not playing Demon Hunter is pretty understandable. He's just focusing on this one Keeper strat. Uh, to be able to play Night Elf in competitive. For Foggy, he always goes with what seems to be the strongest at the moment, right? So... Yeah. I haven't seen a Demon Hunter from him in forever. He played one in the mirror against life, right? Didn't he? Ooh, maybe. Not too sure, actually. On Echo Isles? I think you told me that. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful lightning should creep here, by the way, to start with for Foggy. Not only does he trigger the Lightning Shield, but he moves away perfectly in time that the Lightning Shield hits. But actually, the Renegade then has to follow him, or um, rather has to follow him, and then the Lightning Shield hits. And then three unit Lightning Shield. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And because of that, he is just a little bit faster. Actually, not even really. Exactly the same speed. Almost the same drops. The mantle here a little bit better for Foggy. Yeah, exactly. A little bit more mana is uh, basically a half an entangle. So use that on the Wisp. Needs to detonate, but same happens from Infi's side. Tier 2 is on the way for attack. both players. Foggy a little faster and luring out the creeps. This is the Shadow Priest. Ooh, I really like that. I feel like we've not seen this enough in the mirror and other matchups as well. Luring out the creeps, that little trick. We've seen that for a long, long time. Now he's going to have two dispels to use. It's going to be a very big deal against the Entangle. Keeper here from Infi being super aggro, already running into the main. If you can kill some of those wisps during tech, that's going to be really painful. Can't reproduce them, obviously. That may force him to stay, you know, low lumber heading towards tier 2. That would be especially painful if you want to go tier 3. But in this matchup nowadays, normally it's tier 2 play. We'll have to take a, keep an eye out on the lumber here for Foggy. There's still a Treant harassing, but of course he's going to be saving that one. Archers are creeping the Murlocs for Infi, who's getting closer to level 3. Foggy with a staff again. We haven't seen too much staff action on map 1, haven't we? 
I used it mainly to quickly get back to the base, sip up from the moon wells. Once again, resulting in him being pretty dry in moon juice in the mid game. But having always a uh, capable keeper of the grove ready for the fight. Now he's looking for that fight. Looking for the creep jack. Oh my god, he almost sees him. It's night time. Did he see him? I think he saw him. Yes, yeah, there we is. go. Now they certainly did. This Shadow Archer. Priest is a big advantage for Foggy yes. now. But the damage of Infi is a lot higher with two archers more. He's going back though. His tier 2 is almost done. Can he stall the time for the faster alchemist again? Looks like it. But how much moon juice is there for Infi? Looks okay, I guess. Where are the Huntress Halls, Remo? <laughs> they forgot about him. Maybe it really is intentional to get the Alchemist out immediately. But he has the resources left over. Oh, how much is the Huntress Hall? Like 145, right? No, 210. 210? Oh, okay. Maybe then he seriously does intentionally skip it to go for the Alchemist more quickly. And now it would be time for the Huntress Hall. He wants to go for it. Actually, he gets the Cobalt Camp stolen away from his opponent. Now the Alchemist coming in for Infi as well. Earlier in the first game, he had a good trade here in the first Archer War. And uh, another kill is going to be going his way here, apparently. With one Archer dropping low. Heal her. No. No. Players' forces are under attack. See, a little bit of experience for Infi as he gets the kill again. What's the plan now? It's just Archers, as it seems. On both sides. Like Oh, rush. it's a Shredder push. There's a Shredder coming for Foggy. Oh boy, that's gonna be big as he has the Wisp for Repair as well. An Amazonia special with the easy to access laboratory. So much normal damage against archers, that's the, the best thing possible. Acid Bump again though, Shredder can't reach yet. Needs that Entangle to hit, but now the Keeper's out of mana, he can't really Entangle anymore. In the main base for Infi, we do have a Hunter's Hall coming, a shop already up in the back. Ideally, with the Shredder push, we'd love to have a lot of archers behind and healthy archers as well. And then the Shredder tanks and does decent damage, and the Wisps have all that repair coming his way. So, I don't know, if this was supposed to be a lethal timing, it didn't really quite work. Not at all. Hunter's Hold is late now for Foggy compared to Infi's, but Creeping should be a lot faster with this normal damage. I Infi is taking a step back as well going for the items here, for the consumables, and opening up the possibility to expand, which is not that common in Night of Mirror, of course, with all the glaives, but, you know, never bad to have the option. So hero levels, uh, once again, Infi getting ahead a little bit here. And uh, the Skull of the slightly, Beast, though. a great item for Ooh, the glaive. Throws. Yes. Foggy needs the spell in those fights. Greater Invul, though, also really good. Yes. Especially on the Alchemist. He gets focused in the front. He pops it immediately, the Entangle, with the Greater Invul. And then for 15 seconds, with the Chemical Rage, which he certainly should have, can run rampant there in the back line. So many archers. My goodness. Again. Yeah. Did it work well on game one? I'm not too sure. I oh think that my was... god, the drops. Oh, Flute oh of Accuracy... For Glaives, the best thing since sliced bread. Second engine of war again delayed though. Main reason though the archers didn't do so well in game number one, I think, is was just because of Miss Micro, honestly. They were stuck behind the glaives for long. You want to be in a defensive position playing against glaives, you want him to go into you that you have the wider arch that the Vulpal Blades can't hit you so hard. That's the ideal scenario, and then archers can actually stand decently long against the Glaives, especially when they're backed up by a scroll of healing. We have one already on Foggy side. We do. Not yet for Infi. Upgrades kicking in as well. 1-0 for Foggy. 1-0 for Infi as well. Plus 7 thanks to the Flute. That is a massive advantage in those fights. Yeah, absolutely. Upgrades coming in for Foggy as well. Only 1-0. Fog is going to be behind here on upgrades. If there should be an engagement coming in with Infi, with that upgrade advantage and the scroll, it's going to be really hard for Foggy yeah. to hold his ground. Nature's Blessing on both sides as well. Not only to fortify the main base, but also get a better treants as they get a more armor, which is absolutely necessary against those glaives. And now level 3 for the Alchemist. 
decent inventory here on him as well. Pretty tanky now with the ring and the gauntlets. Needs an invul though, and I'm pretty sure gonna go for it. Oh, and the Wands of Illusion, those can always come in handy. Alright, fighting over these trolls. Are we gonna have the first big engagement of this game? The advantage seems to be lying with Infi with all that bonus damage. Yes, 2-0 now. He's got the aura. And the scroll, don't forget. And Foggy really not with that big of an army just yet. Yeah, I would love to see a Zeppelin by Foggy. Not coming in yet. Big acid bomb coming in here towards the archers, the keeper entangled, but not really taking damage on Foggy's side. Usually you wanna focus on that quickly if you can. And again, the archers here by Infi, they're just walking and never shooting, getting barely any value out of them. Big acid bomb here in the back line though. Can he go for a hero kill? Does he want to go for a hero kill? Scroll of the Beast being used now. And look at this damage. It's plus 28. The Keeper of Foggy has to TP out immediately. The Shredder does not survive this, giving the Keeper level 4. So good engagement by Infi, but the consumables gone. But this gives him so much, like opening the upper left hand side of the map with, with the red spot and the second mercenary camp where the renegade is still up foggy cannot allow him to get this he's heading over looking to perhaps contest we're dead even in terms of supply the scroll of the beast is still active but not for much longer the greater in by the way was retained it's still available in the inventory of the keeper not on the alchemist though so he might be in a bit of trouble four glaives against four glaives Foggy now with a second attack upgrade for them as well, but of course, Infi basically has three attack upgrades with the aura. Yeah, scroll is gone. Another glaive. Is someone going into upkeep? Not yet. 43, 44, uh, 45 by Infi. There's two glaives in production, and Foggy is not taking this fight with the aura. He knows he can't fight straight up, so why not kill a production building? This is something that made Foggy super strong when he uh, rose to the top of the scene, especially in games against Romantic, killing production, keeping his opponent's army low while breaking upkeep, but it's actually not working too well. This engine of war is still up and he's going into the Glaive War without a Zeppelin while Infi has one in the air. Engine of War falls now reproducing. It's gonna be much harder. Alchemist here in front entangled for Infi, but doesn't take too much damage. Foggy's Alk has to be careful as well. The heroes have to stick together so they can pass the Invul, which is still available. Now he's going for the Keeper! Is this once again gonna be the easy kill? No! Invul transferred. Nicely done there by Infi. Keeps his first hero alive. And now he's destroying all of the Glaives in the back. The position here is better. They're all stacked up the Glaives for Foggy. Not ideal at all. And the hero super low. Now he will have to retreat here in just a moment. Dropping down to 26 supply only. 12 behind his opponent. A little mistake by Foggy, I guess. He had both invul potions on one hero. Don't know why he did not share them yet in the early stages of the fight. Maybe he could have gone for the keeper then, be a little more aggressive with his heroes. But yeah, heavy losses for the Ukrainian, who's down to 33. But up one production building. Infi did lose quite some stuff as well. So this is not over. Also, the position there was really not ideal you want to have the glaive spread out you want to have the white arc and that was absolutely not the case they were all stacked up on top of each other the wobble blades were coming in big time when infi was the one who had those glaives spread out pretty well also that the ancient of war was kind of in the way he had better vision so heading into the base they are looking for the engagement pretty impatient from foggy to yeah. be honest again like third time this happens now in two days. So be mask for the Alchemist, three gauntlets and a ring of protection. This dude is so tanky, 1.3k HP. And now we have a Zeppelin on Foggy side as well. Glaive War continue. Is it now time for Infi to be a little bit impatient? The Wisps coming in for the detonates. Those are gonna be big. The Treant's gone immediately, but so many Glaives still alive for him. Way more Glaives here for Infi. He's looking for the kills. The Alchemist is giving the vision. He's got the inbuilt pop, but that's pretty aggressive here. And once again, the Glaives are falling. On both sides, though, honestly, they're pretty much going to be left with none at all. Yeah. <laughs> One more time. Zeppelins don't do too much here. Infi is saving three now. Oh, and Tangle onto this big, big tank. Keeper of Foggy has to be careful. Has the big inbuilt remaining, though. Another kill on Foggy's side on that Glaive. And I guess this is looking good for Foggy again. A little down in supply. This matchup is so volatile nowadays. Yeah. It's ridiculous. 
<laughs> Just 10 seconds and everything is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Chemical rage applied. Big damage to the Zeppelin. If he crashes and burn, he gets the vision. Uh, with, oh, he's opening up the path with the treants. That's so nice. Can he save him? Is he fast enough? Doesn't seem like it. Good movement yeah, by Chemical MP. rage over. He should be able to get away here. Oh, or not. Two more hits. Oh, but he has to get out. There's no TP. Invul, Invul, Foggy. What? Where's the Invul? He's trying to get the counter kill, but there's the staff. Passes it over and the counter entangle. What a mistake from the Ukrainian. He can't get out. Is the entangle strong enough? Doesn't seem like it. Oh, man. But what a waste. By Blade the staff, Foggy. Foggy. Okay. Yeah, what a massive mistake. He had, like, easily three seconds to pop that in ball. Uh-oh, Archer's coming in for the block. Staff out, but guess what? Oh, my Ooh. God, he was in range for the entangle. Oh. Animation was going off already, but just split second away comes the yeah. Enterprise and beams him home. That was the cast point right there. Ooh, that was scary. Foggy has one glaive. One glaive to hold on. Hero kill again, but on this alchemist, I don't know if that's the right choice, man. Invo potion pass to his own alchemist, right clicks. He gets him down to 500 HP, that is one third, I guess. But both of Foggy's heroes are about to fall. Here's the entangle, here are the right clicks, massive damage, keep her down again. And without entangle, what can you really do? Just typing GG and equalizing the series is Infi. All right, proving that he can win the Glaive Mirror. Well done there. But what a mistake, man. Come on. With this invul. Yeah, that was uh, an unforgivable mistake, honestly. Yes. Um, Foggy. Busy looking somewhere else, I suppose. Uh, but I think even if he doesn't lose the keeper there, if he keeps the keeper alive, can he find that hero kill? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, that was a mistake. And also the attack into the main of Infi. That was... I guess he thought he was far ahead, but he really wasn't. Yeah, I like the idea of killing the engine of war. That's a good one. But you can do that, like, with three glaives and a zeppelin. Yeah, um, and Infi had used that TP earlier, right? So he perhaps thought that he could do big damage in the main before Infi was able to respond, but it was a pretty quick TP home there. And fighting... You know, in through the main of your opponent with equal numbers isn't good. You're always going to be coming in through an opening. You're going to be stacking up. He can spread out. He can prepare a better position, which is especially in the Glaive Mirror. So, so important. Yep. Wisp advantage as well, obviously. The items were so great for Infi. Um, yeah. For the Alchemist, dude. Jesus the Alchemist Christ. was stacked. Uh, the Flute, of course. Foggy was playing uphill basically the entire game against that Flute, but... Infi was creeping a lot better and moving a lot better on this map, I guess. Thank you, Giddy Lol, for the four-month resub. Keep up the good work, guys. Trying our best, as always. Yeah, in that early game, it looked like Foggy was supposed to get an advantage. He had the Alchemist earlier, he had the Shadow Priest as well, but he didn't really get a lot of mileage out of those yeah. little uh, uh, advantages. Yes, he got the Cobalt Camp away from his opponent, but that was it. And once again, I have to point towards the Kiting Micro. There were a lot of occurrences again where he had his archers ready and one acid bomb hits him, one of them gets attacked and he walks away with all of them. Yeah. Not with the one that's being attacked, he walks away with all of them, loses all the damage uptime, he's not firing back. On the way back, he's not looking at his archers, he's not healing them quickly enough, they're dying. Again, something that Foggy may want to look to improve upon. But alright, let's go. Map number three here. We're turning this best of five into a best of three. Oh, yeah. I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> Last refuge it is. In the upper right, we have Infi from China. Once again, with a normal build here. No fancy creep route. Same goes for Fog. You starts in the bottom left in the red trunks. So this is most certainly going to be a Keeper of the Grove. There are some maps where we might ask ourselves if it could be something else, like Echo Isles, like Terranus, like... AZ even, but not here. If you go demon here, you're just gonna be ending up with way worse creeping. That being said though, life actually played a potum here just yep. a couple of days ago. <laughs> but that he was... fell flat on his face. Yeah, that, that turned out to be a lot worse than 
than a Keeper and an Alchemist. Like, one aura is not as good as Keeper Alchemist, uh, actually. <laughs> Cool. Even with Starfall. But seeing Starfall was pretty cool. That Indeed. was pretty cool. Ultimate's oftentimes very good. Except fucking transmute! Imbalanced piece of shit ultimate. Um, but... <laughs> yeah, nothing, Almost, nothing fancy to see here, huh? Like, all ultimates are imbalanced. In the right situation, every ultimate is imbalanced. But uh, only a few are always, always imbalanced. Yeah, transmute is a joke. Yeah, metamorphosis um, and tranquility also is, is like super. Overpowered. You can run away and TP away from metamorphosis. And you can silence uh, the key, the alchemist or keep your units away as well. You can't silence them all the time. Can't run away all the time, Neo. <laughs> Checkmate! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, creeping starts, normal stuff, infi. Uh, Foggy has a wisp here. Wonder for what? Are they going for the mercenary camps? Later. Are they like after this one? I think you have to wait for a little bit more army. Don't think you can creep it with just one archer. A couple of treants. Claws of attack. Nice start here for Infi. Circlet also pretty nice. Both here being blessed with fairly good items. The rings, of course, not what you want. On your first hero, at least. On the Alchemist, they're actually pretty good. I'm so glad, by the way, that people are starting to appreciate armor. That was so yeah. undervalued for yeah. so, so, so long. Finally, we realize uh, that it's pretty good. You especially realize it, by the way, when you're playing ladder games and suddenly it's a level 4 Paladin against you and everything <laughs> has like plus 4 armor and nothing's dying. Yeah, we, we, we saw the Rifleman yesterday with 11 armor and they were tanks all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Absolutely. So Foggy had the first one to be going for the mercenary camp. And it's gonna be Shadow Priest time right away. The Berserker. Not ready yet. But yeah, this isn't so easy to creep, man. You only have a couple of archers, and the tanks are gonna be gone, the trains are all dead. Did Foggy not map this out quite correctly? Oh, you don't wanna lose your Shadow Priest, man. Not to the creeps! Fog. Oh, thank goodness he got ensnared. When you get ensnared, you drop the aggro. Otherwise, that one would have died. <laughs> He gets the flute for it, so the losses were worth it. Infi with his natural done now. A little better equipment he has, and now starting his rock golem mercenary camp as well. But yeah, a lot of mana invested onto healing here. Also needs a lot of mana to heal the keeper back up. But he's level 3 now for once he's ahead in supply, but Infi is expanding. Wow, that is so unusual in this matchup. So easy to kill. Yeah. Like, Glaives and Mountain Giants both really good against this. But this is like a, a, psych a psychological play, right? He's going for it because he just assumes that Foggy will not be scouting because it is so weird. I would yeah. imagine. Also, you want to fight it at home, basically. So this makes Foggy move out on the map and leave his home. Speaking of moving out on the map here, the Keeper is heading home right now, trying to juice up from the Moonwells. If his army here gets found next to the Creep Camp, this could be really problematic. But he does have the Shadow Priest, of course, for that dispel. We'll have to pop it quickly. Actually, Infi holds on to his mana. This time, he's the first at the Tavern, and he's going to be getting the Alchemist first in this game. All right. No second engine of war. He's staying on Archers for quite some time. But same goes for Foggy. He's got a thousand gold. Again, has no Huntress Hall. Here right, here's the Alchemist, obviously, and popping down Ancient of War and Huntress Hall again. <laughs> Alright, this is the third time in a row. Is this just how the build is planned? I don't know why. Maybe you want to get improved bows first, but it doesn't take that long. Also, he had like a thousand gold. Why not build the Huntress Hall earlier? Yeah, or a shop or something. Yeah. Shop's also pretty good. I don't understand these elves, but big tree line here. Acid <laughs> bomb, on, of course, on both sides. Oh, tree. nice dodge of the acid bomb here. Foggy was waiting for it to hit, moving back with his ranged army. That was pretty cool. Only hitting the keeper here. But of course, acid bombs are still two left here on the alchemist. I wonder, by the way, if it's exactly fair that acid bomb can have 100% uptime i think maybe 
on the cooldown, something should be done. But okay, here we go once again. This is of course mainly a distraction attack that Infi is going for for his expansion. This is his win condition and the expo is done and it's almost entangled already. Yeah, uh, really smart play by Infi, keeping Foggy so busy. Of course, a lot of mana was invested, so he has to retreat now. But on the way back home, he steals some experience points from his opponent. So I like that as well. But Infi, still no Hunter's Hall, still no second engine of war. Also low on resources. Well, he's going for mercs, so that's fine. Is he going into wins, Hippo Archers? Can be countered so easily. But if you have the economy advantage, you can just overwhelm sometimes. Foggy has no idea, dude. He still hasn't scouted this. He has yeah. no clue. Yeah. We were praising the scouting of the players over the last couple of days, but here now it is certainly lacking. A little bit. Well, there's no real indicator, right? Like, it's not yeah. a lot of archers compared to the first two games. And again, it's of the Beast, by the way. So, from Infi's army size and inventory, he really doesn't know. It's not obvious, that's true. But you have Wisps, man. It's so easy to scout with Wisps, just send one there. At one point, you don't have to be checking all the time. But yeah, he's not doing it. And he is falling further and further behind in supply. 10 down already, and this might just be getting worse. Uh-oh, Creep Jackman now possible. This spot will take some time, but he gets the Ancient Jungle. Woo! Even more damage on the Glaives. He also has the big mana from the shop. So these items are phenomenal. Infi is moving in now. Creeps are still there. Oh, he's going to have to TP out of this. Massive no acid bomb, though. Wants to take advantage of this position. But the Alchemist swaps the TP, gets out. So everything's safe as one archer gets killed. And it's going to get another one here, as it seems. With the Entangle and the Acid Bomb. But we have three Ancients of War now. This is gonna oh be so many archers. Yeah. Qu question in chat, does the Flute Aura apply to the range attacks of the Alchemist? Yes, it does. Also, if you have an orb, for example, on the Blade Masters, it, it applies there as well if you attack air. It's not uh, displayed on the character sheet, but yeah, it does. All right, here we go. Foggy, this looks like it's his one chance to win this game. Mom Spaghetti, he has to kind of destroy the main base. He's got a Zeppelin again, but he's only got three Glaives, only one attack upgrade. Not even Vorpal Blade's done yet. It seems like Foggy's been mining with four Wisps this game. Like, where's, where'd all his resources go? He's not even 40 supply yet. Yeah, it's kind of weird indeed. Oh, Entangle on an illusion. Did he only lose a single... Archer so far this game? Did we miss some losses? Well, I guess the Shadow Priest died somewhere, but that's kind of it, right? Yeah. Are under so too. Oh my god, this is so much stuff. 65 versus 40 supply. Oh, look at this army. It's so much. And the Scroll of the Beast. Like, the value of the Scroll of the Beast oh, now. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not supposed... I don't know how Foggy's supposed to do this. Oh my god, the Scroll of the Beast. Yeah, this is plus four on every archer, and it's so many archers. On the Berserker, it's even more. It's plus eight. And Tangle on this Alchemist to keep him here. Foggy is trying to kite away, but these Glaive Throwers, again, are not doing any damage. Now they finally start to shoot, but... Infi is just bulldozing over him here. Yeah, this is just numbers overwhelming, dude. That's the nice thing about an early expansion. It can just win you the game with the resources. Not too difficult. And now even the Zeppelin's gonna fall. How to get out now? There's no TP. Infi lets him suffer a little more, keeps him alive. But yeah, Foggy fighting a super tough uphill battle. As he, yeah, now he must know about the expansion, of course, but damage is done. Foggy has some serious faith in these glaive throwers, man. He's like, as long as I have glaives, anything is doable. 
Oh, oh, but Infy is breaking through this tree. This is a nice choke for Foggy at the moment, but there's just Infy stuff everywhere. Breaking the entangle here. The Alchemist is quite low. Foggy sees the mass is coming from right and top and taps out. Infy, after losing map number one, is back strong. Winning two maps in a row and having match points for third place now. Well played, man. Going just for a bit of a gamble. It's not really that much of a gamble you can certainly afford as a night of uh, going for that expo during tech if it's scouted you can just cancel get most of the resources back that's just a bit of opportunity cost gone and well lack of scouting it can lose your games indeed i would like to recall you by the way because uh, you sound a little robotic from time to time i hope that will fix it because we want All to right. hear your beautiful time with 100 uh, your beautiful voice with 100 percent uptime of course so recalling you in a second did this create a new connection uh i don't know how do i sound sounds good now do i sound as as good as i sound at the karaoke bar <laughs> 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 oh boys remo at karaoke is yeah. something been to karaoke only once right i think or twi twice maybe with the koreans i mean we went with yeah. sky as well but that was a very different story <laughs> <laughs> but when we went with the koreans um honestly none of us sounded really good but i'm pretty i'm pretty uh confident that i sounded by far the worst so. that is correct <laughs> <laughs> to be fair Compared to the Koreans, we all sound like crap. They like especially Soin and Focus. Yeah, Soin right? was good. Yeah, Soin yeah. was really good, and especially Focus surprised me. <laughs> yeah, the Koreans call it KTV, by the way, because it's karaoke with a television set. I am, I guess, <laughs> and that's their favorite way of partying. Unfortunately. <laughs> I, I always ask him, do we want to go to a club or to a bar? Oh, no, no, we have dinner. Maybe KTV? Uh, no, dude, not KTV. But all right. Um, enough of karaoke. Let's finish. Our, uh, yeah. Focus on this game here. And let's wonder, is this perhaps where Infi finishes this with a 3-1 in the mirror against Foggy? He is the, uh, the Vice World Champion. He's not supposed to lose this, dude. Not to an off-racing in fee. Exactly. Foggy was so strong in mirror matches lately. At WGL against uh, Law Lyad. In this cup against Life. He didn't lo uh, drop too many games. And now, apparently, m maybe it's not his day. Yesterday he wasn't playing at 100% either. Uh, sometimes it's just, you know, the shape of the day that makes the difference. Infi may be a little angry about yesterday, coming in with a lot of motivation into the semi-final. Foggy, here on Twisted Meadows, with the better starting position, as his main base is next to a mercenary camp. But he got the Shadow Priest on AZ very early, he got the Shadow Priest on Last Refuge very early, and it didn't make a big difference, like he lost both matches despite that. Yeah, something's always going wrong in the early, it feels like. First game he was still able to overcome, but he's been struggling, man. Early scout here coming out from Infi, and it's definitely going to be an aggressive keeper. As of course, you can't really do anything else. You're level 1, you don't have units, you don't have an Ancient of War even. You could creep the green camp with a... Uh, with a uh, what's it called? The Treants. Why am I forgetting this word? Uh, but it's of course not going to be worth it, so he's going to be aggressive here. Loses the Wisp. Not ideal. Oh, it's going to be a battle. A big one for the Shadow Priest, but it's actually not ready yet. Oh, but Infi is nearby. Foggy is not. And is he stealing it? He has to, right? I mean... The mercenary camp is protected now again by creeps. If Foggy draws out the creeps, Infi's going to get it. Yeah, exactly. So he can't creep this. It's a really good timing there with the Wisp. Just with the positioning is gonna prevent any kind of uh, creep here. Yeah, really, really nice. nicely done. Infi, by the way, tried to start a new creep route here with an engine of war against the mercen uh, the the shop here. That didn't work at all. <laughs> Even with three wisps to repair, a little too strong that camp is. Yeah, exactly. 
creeping here got a lot harder on this map. It was never easy for Night Elves on Twisted Meadows, and with the new Ancient of War, it's even more difficult. We, in fact, see this map very rarely only anymore nowadays. I think this is the first time in the playoffs we see it, right? Yep, I think so it too. If you, by the way, not going hunts, late Ancient of War, but no Hunter's Hall, only archers coming in. And I kind of like that choice. Because Huntresses get completely obliterated by Glaive Throwers. Yeah. And so far we just have a bit of poking and prodding. A bit of trading going on. Nothing's Glaive dying, just tree and... Tre well, the trees are dying, actually. Which is going to be very sad for all the Greenpeace guys out there. <laughs> but other than that, it's pretty calm so far. Not even any experience gathered by any of these players yet. Yeah, these uh, Treants are dying a natural death, though, so they don't suffer too much, as it seems. We have zero experience on both sides. So they all expired. Nice micro on both sides here. Foggy not going for a second engine of war at the other mercenary camp, which would be the normal play, I guess. Doesn't want to expose his production more. They're dying a natural death? Are you saying that when trees die in real life, they become animated treants and walk away somewhere else. What? I mean, the they... yeah, the treants are trees for me. They're not, man. They're like ants. They are ants are have... trees as well. They have consciousness. No, they're not. <laughs> they're not oh, plants. Oh, missed a lot of the ring lore, man. They're they're living beings. They're living conscious beings. Uh, trees are living beings as well. Yeah, but not conscious. So who gives a How shit? How do you know? People I, are talking to their plants, and they yeah. seem to grow better then. Yeah, right. <clears throat> People also read horoscopes, and uh, they're always right. Well, creeping continues. <laughs> 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 Trees are coming into Foggy's main, doing some good damage to the Moonwells. And Force is a town portal already. Can he kill this moon well? Oh my god, Foggy is supply stuck already. If he loses this moon well, it's actually a pretty big deal, but no, Wisp arrive in time. He's still supply stuck, by the way. Um, for a little while at least. Moon well number three not finished yet means no second hero yet. But he's leveled. Wow, that creep camp was so much experience. Also got a lot from the Treants, actually, coming in with a double detonate there. That was a big move. And. Has a massive lead now. Okay, once again, he comes out with a bit of an... This time it's more than just a little advantage out of the early game. Can he translate this now into a big advantage moving into the mid game as well? He has to. This is level 3 for him. He got both big consumables, the Potion of Greater Mana and the Shadow Priest now for him. He's also pretty safe with the Potion of Healing. And the Moonwell is ready too for 40 supply. Infi creeping his laboratory, so this could open up the way for uh, Zeppelin once again. Absolutely. Wouldn't be surprised to see Foggy creeping that soon as well, as he is such a big fan of the Zeppelin. But of course, that's going to be positioning you far out in the corners of the map, and you won't be able to do much then. He is instead going for the middle. Level 2 finally reached for Infi's Keeper, but so late with this. And I like what Foggy is doing, um, stealing the Nulls here in front of Infi's base. And maybe even the shop, but Infi's gonna scout this with the Wiz. Very good scout. The Wiz were heading somewhere else though, actually, I wonder where. Greater uh, mana already popped by this Keeper, by the oh. way. He has much more mana points to use right now and is going for an early aggressive play towards the main. TP forced to respond to this. Lots of archers once again, though, by Infi. He should be in a pretty good spot to defend and hold on here. Yeah, I wonder if this is the best thing for Foggy to do. He could have crept the shop, and then what can yeah. Infi do, really? I think so, too. Like, once again, he's really forcing the issue when there's more than just one way to skin a cat, you know? You don't have to always attack the main base. And he's not killing the, the engine of war here. He's not killing this one in production. Infi has double engine of war up. And all that Foggy got here. Okay, level 2 alchemist by killing a few tree and, and distracting Infi. But was that worth it The big to, to, to use the big mana potion? I don't know. And the Wisp advantage is really coming in big time here. For the detonates and for the repair, of course. And now, 
The greater mana was consumed. The keeper's still low mana. Out of mana, in fact, now. And he didn't even find anything anything with that. That yeah, was one hell of a wasted greater mana. Yeah. Was he late on his tier 2? Like, super late on his tier 2? Because there's no Huntress Hall. There's no... S nothing. Like, he's only building archers. There's no yeah, second I think, with, I think with that early, with that experience advantage, he thought he could press and win with mercenary support. And for that, of course, Huntress Hall doesn't do anything. But it didn't quite work. And now we do have Glaive starting to come out. They are going to have the upgrade soon. And this was supposed to do critical damage before the glaives were ready. Well, at least there's no Warper Blades yet, but that's only a matter of seconds here. Mass Mercs, but Foggy, if he loses this map, he's only fourth place. And Infi would retain his title as the Bronze Boy of Warcraft 3. Mass Wisps again coming in. The Keeper here for Foggy, a little bit more mana, but pretty much out himself. Here comes another detonate, possibly. If he can take out the Ancient of War, maybe that's a good start. But so hard, man, with this Nature's Blessing and only piercing damage on his side. He gets a few archers with the Acid Bomb, though. If he gets the Berserker out, that would be finally a nice blow. But, uh oh Potion being used on the Alchemist. Heavy focus on him, thanks to the Glaive Throwers. 0-0, zero, zero, but still very good damage. He just cannot kill this Ancient. He doesn't have the time to focus on it. Everything's all still very healthy here for Foggy, and Infi can really say the same thing about himself. He has the Glaives, but barely any archers to hold the line in front of him anymore. And I think now it's finally gonna be time for the Ancient of War to die after an assault on it for a solid two minutes at least. Ancient falls, and now production is crippled. But it's actually the same production now, as Foggy is still on one Ancient of War. Going for the Mercs now again, I guess. Foggy again with so much gold. Oh, what's Foggy doing with his keeper there? Getting, okay, what? two heal scrolls and then staff out. Was the invul on cooldown? Uh, didn't the check it. Invul is like super valuable. I guess it must have been. Yeah, it's ready now. That, I, I must imagine, has to be a mistake. Like... If you don't have the money, then wait five seconds. Well, he was attacked by creeps, so... Yeah, yeah. maybe he thought he couldn't wait there, had to go into the creep camp right away and then staff out. Otherwise, Infi might be coming in. Okay, that's uh, actually might be a little bit too critical here. Alchemist finds the Lion Horn. Not too bad. A little bit more armor against the Acid Bomb. But now we do have the Glaives with the upgrades. We do have a Zeppelin as well. Yeah, a lot of anti-air. So I wonder what the Zeppelin is doing. He was caught... Um... Very, very quickly. Oh, mass detonates here. That's the level up for Foggy. Level 4. One level ahead on the Keeper of the Grove. But Infi has the level 2 Acid Bomb. Still a scary push right here. And Infi now with a not-so-great position. The archers are all moving forward for Foggy. They're going to be able to fire and find those kills possibly very quickly here. And they're in the middle of the base pretty much. And now he's running forward trying to overwhelm. Is he looking for a surround or something? No, he's looking for the Zeppelin and the Glaives, ignoring pretty much anything that's standing on the ground. And big scroll of healing coming in right there for Foggy. He seems to be taking out this ground army pretty quickly right now. Level up for him as well for the Alchemist. Level 3 now for him. Invul popped on, Fo uh, on Infi's Elk to get him out of that entangle. Moondra is looking really dire. Still only Glaives left, with, which still are not that amazing against Archers. Three of them are about to die, though. Another big Acid Bomb. Gotta get those Archers away or another Heal Scroll. 40 Supply against 35. The game on a Knife's Edge here. Can Infi hold longer? There is a bit of Moon Juice, but only so much. Yeah, and he's out of Scrolls of Healing. That is the big, yeah. big deal. The next Acid Bomb could find so many kills. Yeah, good timing for Foggy to retreat. I've never seen a base on Twisted Meadows deforested like this, by the way. <laughs> this yeah. hill, man. I have never seen this hill like that. There's certainly a lot of stuff missing. He's got the heal scroll again. So important. But he has to pop it before the fight. So the next acid bombs again are gonna hurt. Would love to see... If he's becoming very confident here. Moving yeah. out far out of his base. I don't know about that so much. With a lot of glaive throwers, he is uh, very confident in his damage. But one of them's exposed, almost falls. Nice, oh, retreating back. 
creating a funnel here once again between the few trees which are still standing, but he's going to lose one glaive. Oh. He's going to lose two, lose two glaives, and that was just one step too far. Yep. That was a nice position for Vorpal Blades as the archers were just in one straight line, which is the max damage for the glaive throwers, but can't capitalize from that position. Foggy is losing two mercs as well there. Keeper finally level four for Infi, but here's the level three on the al uh, the level four on the alchemist. Will he die though with another entangle? No, no mana. Chasing with his own alchemist, but that's not enough. Four archers just died. Foggy went for that hero kill, exposing his back line. That's gonna be archer number five dying here. One step too far there from uh, from Infi, and then Foggy getting baited, following in his opponent's footsteps and going one step too far himself. Now Foggy down to 28 supply, but also only 30 for Infi. Only one Ancient of War on both sides. What a weird game, man. Zeppelin is still there, but he can't really risk it, right? To go into a base? Don't think so. Heal scrolls. Foggy needs heal scrolls. Otherwise, the acid bomb is just going to destroy him. Yeah. Level 4 now on this alchemist as well. Once again, he is that sturdy frontline tank. A player's force Lots of mana though. Potentially on Foggy. Clarity running. Mana potion at the ready. Infi caught up so much in experience on the Keeper, by the way, with all those Archer kills. They are basically equal now. And the Wish Detonates again, helping him out so much. There's no Treants almost ever for Foggy doing anything. Whereas Infi just keeps on summoning them and summoning them. And this Acid Bomb just keeps ticking. The Berserker almost dead. The Mauler almost dead. If Foggy dives in a little bit deeper, he's going to be suffering great losses here very soon. And always fighting into Infi's base, always oh, acid against bomb. production. This acid bomb is gigantic. Always fighting against Moon Juice as well. Needs to get this heal scroll again. Last one. Pops it immediately once more, but it's five archers. That's it. Aiming for the hero kill with Treants. Gets the surround, but I... Oh, there's no staff actually. Walks out though, with a kill even. And now no more mana, no more entangle. Instead, Foggy's gonna be losing his own first hero and he loses this series with one to three to Infi off racing. Infi is pretty strong as a Night Elf man, playing this a little more clever, inviting yeah. Foggy into his base over and over and over again. And yeah, level three alchemist again. So damn good. And Foggy was late on that. Yeah, level 4 Keeper was faster for the Ukrainian, but this level 2 Acid Bomb against Mass Archers is a game winner. Absolutely. And not only in this series, but also in the previous days, um, especially in the semifinals, Foggy is oftentimes being so impatient. Yeah. Going for those big push plays, these those pretty much all-in plays. And he was able to take out somewhat weaker players with that, but against... TH against Infi, it just doesn't work. When you have the advantage, you don't have to finish the game right away. Just play it out from there. Yeah, that's exactly what Neutron was saying. That's what we kind of advise him to do as well. But he has a, uh, he has a knife between his teeth, man. He's just full out aggression. It works for him quite well as he's the fourth place. This is in no means a bad result, but true, it true. could have been better, I feel. Yeah. Um, still, though, um, the only European, the only foreigner here to make it to top four. There's still a decent prize pool, but I can't help but feel that there was more possible for him. Absolutely. I have no idea what is possible next because it is the grand final coming. Best of seven between the two world's greatest players in Warcraft 3 2018. Moon, the champion of WGL Winter against TH, who won the two GCSs prior to WGL Winter. Three world championships in one match. The greatest mind that Warcraft 3 has at the moment in a best of seven. It doesn't get much better than this. The hype is real. Moon TH, we're gonna conclude the WTV Thunder and Fire Cup in a bit. But first, there's a little break. See ya.